1964 when we arrived at Grandma's house in the bottoms of El Reno, Oklahoma. It was nearly 11 p.m. The cab driver dropped us off at what appeared to be the end of a lonely old dirt road. It was quite dark and somewhat desolate. The little house stood barely visible, shrouded in a cluster of trees whose branches draped over the rooftop in a rain of foliage. They swayed in the mild summer breeze, casting splotchy shadows in the light of their path under the moonlit sky. In the distance, I could hear the lonely croaking of frogs followed by the scratchy chirping shrills of locusts and crickets, while lightning bugs danced aimlessly, sketching broken trails of light against the darkness. Pretty well worn out from the train ride, we all sensed that our lives was about to take a drastic turn. Then sleepily, one by one, we tumbled out of the old cab, stretching and yawning as the Oklahoma red clay dust settled in our socks. The lamppost that stood among the shrubbery in Grandma's front yard supported a solemn glow encased in a glass fixture. From the darkened distance, the lamplight of Grandma's house was about the only evidence that someone lived on that street. Y'all hungry? Grandma said. There's some bologna in the icebox. You can make a sandwich. I looked around the old dreary house. A lamp setting on the living room table cast a dim glow as I gradually regained my focus. I could see the hazy silhouettes of furniture in Grandma's living room. I guess because it was nighttime and the excitement and anticipation of a new environment hadn't really set in along with the fact that our move to Grandma's house wasn't a vacation. We were orphans now. 